Good evening, friends, and welcome to a new channel update for the Cool Gaming Bros for the new year. I hope you guys are in good health and good cheer this year. I, for one, am particularly excited because I just got a space heater in the mail. <laughs> I can keep warm while I play the games in this computer chair here. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. This is, as usual, a channel update for the month. Direct communication from me to you to tell you what's going on, what game series I'm focusing on, and where we're going with the channel. Now, normally I begin by talking about the games I'm currently making playthroughs for, and I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna postpone it a bit. First, I actually wanna talk about where the channel's going in this new year and what it's transformed into. Uh, really, the Cool Gaming Bros have kind of become the Cool Gaming Bro, and that's me, because I have been releasing just pretty much single player content, and I said I would do this months ago, that the channel was turning in this direction, and that's kind of where it is now. I love the bros that I play games with. If I do play multiplayer, it'll be with them, and I'll show it, but they like gaming. They don't love it with the same passion I do, and they don't really care about sharing it with people. So, that is why this channel has transformed into a one-man show, really. But I embrace the change, and I'm making videos all the same. With a renewed gusto, really. As for the videos I've been making lately, I want to speak about their video quality, because this has been a big concern of mine, and one that I have spent many hours trying to fix. The issue I see on YouTube is that a lot of artifacts appear on screen and an issue called macro blocking where the screen seems to turn into squares which fuzzes up the video quality in high motion scenes. Now, I'm a twitchy motherfucker when I play games. So you get a lot of that stuff going on in my videos and it's a big turnoff. In fact, it is the biggest turnoff to why I've not been playing Warband as much as I have because it looks awful on YouTube. I've yet to find a real fix for this issue. I'm still searching, but in the meantime, I have found a way to make YouTube's compression algorithms compress a little more favorably on my videos. Most of the videos I release are in 720p, barring a few PC games that I'm able to play at 1080p, but if you've noticed on my latest releases, you can put that shit up to 4, 1440p. That's a thing nowadays. I don't know. My, my monitor don't even display games that high. The reason my videos are uploaded in that resolution is that I upscale them so that YouTube puts me in a higher bandwidth bracket, basically, and gives more forgiving compression to the 720p and 1080p settings. So, if you watch my videos, especially console gaming ones, watch them at 720p because that's how I record them and I think it looks best that way. Okay, now that we've discussed channel direction and video quality that doesn't strain your eyes, now I guess we can start talking about the series on this channel and what my focus is and what my focus will be in the future. If you've noticed lately, I've been playing a lot of console games. Like, I dusted off the PS3 I really only own Demon Souls. I bought a PS3 and never fucking used it. Until now. Thanks to Red Faction Armageddon, I am getting back in touch with my console game and roots. And deep down, I, I like playing games with a controller more than I do on a keyboard because it just feels natural to me. That's how I grew up playing games. Red Faction renewed my desire to play on consoles and because of it I ended up getting a better capture card. And one thing led to another, and now I'm playing all sorts of console games. I will make a quick mention that Red Faction Armageddon is available on PC, and it is fucking stupendous. I, it is my hope that the multiplayer community for that game grows and thrives, because there are few games like it. You will see future videos here and there of Red Faction multiplayer, because there's really no multiplayer like it. Now. As for the games Red Faction has led me to play, let us start with Journey. I will be uploading the final episode to this right after I finish recording this, 
And I must say that game was just pleasant. It was just great playing that game. I like free open experiences where you kind of create your fun. And Journey is one of those games. I will say that in editing it though, and not to spoil the ending that will happen soon, but kind of regret how I finished the game because I didn't apply the lesson the game taught me. The game was about the journey, and I got really excited about reaching the destination that I forgot about my friend. Looking back on it, I wish I'd ended the game different, but nonetheless, it was a fun adventure and I hope you enjoy it. Next we move on to good old Warband. I've not been playing as much of this series, but I do plan to return to it. It would be a crime for me not to return to it, after such kind people have devoted their time to making really fabulous art for it. So, my video quality issues have really been the thing that have been holding Warband back in my mind. As the battles get larger, I am noticing that I get slow down in my gameplay, so I have slow down and the videos look like garbage on YouTube, so it's been kind of a turnoff. I've come up with some solutions, I think. The big appeal to me in single player Warband are big battles, so I really don't want to scale down how large the fights are, but I think I'll scale down the resolution and that would fix a few things. I'll try that out, but I'll be back to being a samurai. Heck, I might even watch some samurai movies just to get back into the mindset of what it's like to lead my troop of Meiling and Musashi and all of them through feudal Japan. After that, we have Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen. I am so saddened that this version of Dragon's Dogma does not have that stupid J-Rock. Uh, sometimes I leave the title screen up while I set up my recording stuff, and that sad harpy lady sings, and it's not the same thing. Still puts a stupid smile on my face though, because it's so fucking cheesy. But anyway, Dragon's Dogma. This video series is probably the one I have the most material for. I've got a number of episodes cooking for this one because it's a really fun game. The fights in it flow well and it feels good to play. I've been noticing though as my adventure draws on that my funnest times I think were when the game was absolutely brutal because now I'm at a stage where Things don't kill me as easily, so I'm able to see the game for what it is and kind of abuse its mechanics in a way. And I never like reaching that point in games. I never want to see past the facade of the experience a game presents me into its nitty gritty mechanics and really how they're working and how you can work them. But such is the case in Dark Arisen. And that's why I'm gonna try out a whole lot of different vocations from this point forward. And despite its flaws in design, it's still a great experience. Last, we have Red Dead Redemption. Damn, it feels good to be a cowboy. I still have to watch The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And when I resume my adventures in this game, we're going to Mexico. You'll see why we're heading to Mexico when I release the next few videos, but yeah, this game's really fucking awesome. It plays to me like Max Payne set in the West, and I love Max Payne. I played the first two games, I adored them, no surprise that Rockstar made those games, so Red Dead Redemption plays like it. And in fact, years ago on this channel I started a project to make a playthrough of Max Payne in a cinematic way to kind of make up for the shitty movie with Mark Wahlberg, but... I kind of abandoned that project, but nonetheless, still love Max Payne, and I love what I see of it in Red Dead Redemption. So, I'll be continuing that. As you can see, I've listed a number of projects I'm working on, and I find that I prefer to work on multiple things at once, because then I could bounce around from game to game. I don't know about you guys, but I've ended up collecting a whole lot of Steam games and a backlog of things to play, and when I do end up playing a long game, I usually never finish it because I lose myself somewhere in the middle. By switching up which game I play, I kind of make it fresh again in my mind when I go back to it. So then I sit down and I'm like, oh, okay, today I feel like having a fantasy adventure. Let me go back to Warband. Or 
today I feel like being a cowboy. Let's play some Red Dead Redemption. That's my mentality with the games, to keep it fresh and my commentary good. A byproduct to playing all these different games and just producing more content is that I am getting a whole lot more copyright strikes from Camp, Capcom, and Rockstar and all these different companies, and I, I don't really dispute them, I just let them do their thing. If you ever see an ad like this one that appears during the video, that is not an ad I placed, because I don't like those intrusive ads. If it's an ad that helps me, it's either before the video or after it ends. But, honestly, it's kind of untenable to put ads on these videos altogether. So, I've kind of done away with the practice. If you've noticed now, almost all my new videos no longer have ads. That is why I mention here that if you want, there is a link to help me continue making videos through donations. Right now, and as of the last few months, it still sits at zero. But! That does not mean that you guys have not been kind. As I move on now to talk about the future games I plan to play, I make mention that two gentlemen in the community, people who watch my videos, have gone above and beyond to be kind to me this last December. The kind gentlemen, by the names Drago and Ed Hell Dude, have come forward and gifted me copies of Legend of Grimrock 1 and 2 and Dark Souls 2. I feel indebted to these men and I thank you guys. And as such, I want to share their gifts they gave me with you. So I will be playing these games in the future. Um, Legend of Grimrock, I really never even knew was a game that existed. But one of the pleasures of Let's Playing is that I get to hear about all sorts of games I never otherwise would have exposed myself to. And I looked up Legend of Grimrock and it seems like a really cool game. It's a dungeon crawler set in first person, and I think it's a new school throwback to older style of dungeon crawlers. It reminds me a lot of a game I used to play on Sega Genesis called Shining in the Darkness, which was a offshoot to the Chin Shining Force series. Uh, I like that game. I think I was too young to appreciate it. I just kind of ran my head into walls and enemies. But I'd like to play The Legend of Grimrock, and I'll do it at some point in this channel. As for Dark Souls 2, I'm sure many people have been wanting me to play this, and well now I have no excuse, I have the game. I plan to play this after I finish Dragon's Dogma. I really don't want to juggle two fantasy action RPGs, mainly because it'll confuse my fingers. But as soon as that's done, I'll begin with Dark Souls 2, and I plan to play it without the DLC. The reason I choose to do this is because I've read some saddening and alarming things about how the remake of Dark Souls 2 that's going to include all the DLC that'll be named Sins of the Fist. Fist of the Scholar. God damn it, I always fuck it up. But that remake includes certain features that should have been included in the regular game, like mainly DX11 support. That is really questionable decisions, and it saddens me that even a company like From Software suffers from this incomplete game syndrome that pretty much the whole gaming industry is going through right now. So, I plan to play Dark Souls 2, the base game, to see what exactly From Software sold to people as a complete package. Because I believe a game, when pressed to a disc and put in a store, well, I guess that'll be antiquated with digital distribution, but if it's set for sale, it should be a full experience. So I want to see if Dark Souls 2 gives me a full experience without any extra content. Now, the beauty of this though is that come March, or I'm not sure when the new remastered edition launches, I plan to replay the game with all the DLC and come at it from a different angle, with a different perspective. Instead of blind and meandering about and lost and confused, I get to really analyze the game and do different things with it. So I'll be doing two playthroughs of Dark Souls 2. Hopefully, that's what I plan. With all that discussion discussed, I will take a moment here to make a quick plug for something I did for Halo. Though you don't see any Halo content on this channel, unless you subscribed years ago, I love Halo. I would have loved nothing more than to make Halo videos for this channel, 
with all sorts of neat camera angles from the theater mode and music thrown in there. But I can't do that because Halo has transformed into a game series that I no longer enjoy. As such, I like to write and I wrote a essay that took a lot of time and thought about the problems with the latest Halo. If you care about Halo and the direction it's going, I put a link down there for what I wrote on Halo, as I hope it sparks debate within the Halo community about where the series should go, which I think is back to its roots as a fun, bro-y shooter. Well, as this video draws to a close, I will share with you some sounds that a friend of mine shared with me. I received a message from an estranged friend of mine telling me about a band that might delight my ears. And indeed it did. I am happy that he shared this thing that brings him mirth to me. And I think that's really why I have this section in my videos. Because it relates to all I do on this channel. I am sharing things that bring me joy and mirth to hopefully introduce it to your life or to your eardrums. Now, I've been playing their music throughout this video and copyright striking the hell out of myself because I don't think I'm hurting them. In fact, I think I'm just spreading word about a really cool band. And this band is L1011. They are a guitar and electrified drumming duo who make post-rock. Post-rock is a subgenre of rock that is instrumental and more rhythmic. I think my ears gravitate to this sound because it reminds me a bit of chiptune music and video game music in general. And as a kid, I was always delighted by listening to Mega Man. Although L1011 is not strictly video game music, it bears a slight resemblance. It's equal parts soothing as it is loud. And I'm really surprised that two men produce all these sounds and make them flow so well. So. Please check them out. Don't sue me for stealing the royalties they weren't going to get. And have a wonderful rest of your year. Stay healthy and stay happy.